Hey, you want to get high, man? Let's stimulate your mind. Get up, Chucky! What have we got here? A fucking comedian. Hmm, Rojan Kim? Uh, honestly, I wake up every day thinking about committing suicide. <laughs> I can't get out of the day, so, you know, I understand. Uh, oh, no, I tell people all the time, listen, uh, West Coast shit. I don't think I would ever kill myself, but if I did, it would be something trivial as of to get out of the conference ball. Like, like, that, like that is, to me, the beauty of suicide. Yes. It's really that I'm sad of it all, I said, yeah, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Just a very, like, uh, extreme choice that's always been there. <laughs> you know, that might just get exercised. Anyone who tells you it's not an option is literally mm -hmm. lying. It's always an option and it is always probably your last best option. Well, that's what, um, you know, that dude, uh, Albert Camus, he said, that's his only proof of free will is that at any time he could blow his brains. <laughs> hey, like I've, I've never heard of that guy. B, that's an amazing quote and C, that scares the shit out of me a little bit. Yo, read some Camus while you got some time. Camus wrote The Stranger. Uh, it's a famous book. I, you might've heard about it. Um, the, uh, the the stranger it's actually it's very it's like a thin it's very thin and it's kind of like what the fuck but like it's literally just about a guy who just decides to kill an arab dude on the beach one day mm. and it's like well i'm in say no more say no yeah, more. yeah exactly say that's more. all you uh, need <laughs> random that's arab all you needed homicide. to hear yeah yeah, yeah just God. arab homicide matter of fact i think showtime just greenlit that Actually, that was George W. Bush uh, when he launched the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. They know what they did. Yeah, he's like, you know what, this book, hey, you ever read this book, The Stranger? <laughs> you can kill an Arab, it's fine. Dude, um, you know what's funny now that you bring up George W. Bush is this morning, I'm a huge sports fan, like it's an addiction, it's not healthy. And uh, I was looking, they're going to do a documentary on Lance Armstrong. Mm -hmm. And I just remembered, do you remember when Bush was like, just like, it was like 04, 05. He was like an avid cycler. Like that was his thing. He would like go to like the uh, the ranch in Austin on the weekends and like like bike bike with uh, Lance Armstrong. Do you remember that? Nah, man, I don't. But I don't. That sounds like that sounds like my president. I'll tell you what. That's it. First of all, <laughs> sounds like I miss him. him. I miss him greatly. Come on, <laughs> come on. I can't believe how much people have just forgotten about Bush, man. Like you know what? At least because we had Obama. And everybody's acting like, oh, this whole, the presidency this whole time has been this honorable, this like respectable, you know, we were supposed to respect. And you're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> don't you remember? You don't remember 9-11 and Bush? I'm going to tell you about the Bushes. I'm going to tell you about the Bushes. The Bushes are what? Because see, I'm from the South, right? And so the Bushes, they're not racist. They're good old boys. And uh, I, I'm going to tell you this right now. There's nothing better than a good old boy. If you can find yourself a good old boy, a good, a good old boy is aligned to his self, okay? And that's all his morals are. And uh, once you understand that, you can get in where you fit in. Because remember these words, all right? If anyone ever tells you George Bush is a racist, Condoleezza Rice. Like, yeah. That's it. I'm done with you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's right. Wait, hold on. First of all, I'm going to I'm gonna introduce you. So everybody, uh, first of all, welcome to the Roger Kim cast. Uh, Thank you for I'm my me. guest. My guest today is Devonte Green, fellow comedian. Um, God damn it, I'm trying to remember the first time I saw you because I have two very clear memories of I think the first time I ever saw you. Uh, one of them was on Kill Tony, and I remember, you, I remember you. I mean, you're you're fun, you're funny, but at one point you turned all the black people against you. <laughs> they got so mad. You said something, and they were like, "Oh!" And everybody got so angry, and I was like, "Oh, this guy's hilarious." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's kind of my thing. That's <laughs> I, I like to go in any room, and no matter who you are, I'm like, uh, first I like to get you on my side, and then uh, I like then, so fun. Fuck yeah, you, then you like to lose them. You like to lose them, then you like to gain them back. Like, no, and I could tell you were doing that, and I thought it was also funny because, like, you know, it's always like, the store is supposed to be, like, this raw, it's supposed to be, like, this place where it's, like, real comedy and raw or whatever, but, like, you know what I mean? It, there's a there's a line you can cross, and everybody will get really fucking. You know what I mean? Suddenly it's like uh, like church. All of a sudden you're like, oh, I can't believe you said that. You know? <laughs> it's just like what I thought. It was a like, store. What? Like what are you doing? I, that was not in the script. Well, see, that's my whole thing, man. About um, uh, this town in general is that um, free will is not necessarily free will is dangerous. You know. Mm. Um, 
That's why, like, uh, Chappelle, when he says, uh, what's that line of, uh, he want, he doesn't want his kids to know the joys of being wrong, right? Or being ignorant or something like that. Right, right, right. Like, that's a really great quote. As long as you're not malicious in your, in your ignorance, I'm for it. Like, you don't have to be right about everything, people. Yeah. And not only that, there is, the whole point is that uh, we're supposed to be having fun, you know? Like, you're, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you're not up there trying to, like, uh, prove some point or something or, like, you know what I mean? You're not, like, a politician or something. You're, like, you're fucking you're trying to have a good time. And, and Yeah, Rogan, we're more powerful than politicians. Like, uh, great comedians are more powerful than politicians, I think. Well, I understand that. I mean, I mean, well, I get what you're saying, just in terms of people, right? Like, how you reach the people and stuff. But I'm just saying, like, you know, uh, LA, New York turned this way too. I think it's a city thing. And I think it happened, especially after Trump. Uh, it's like the people. Yeah, the whites got scared, man. But it, it isn't like, just oh. the whites, man. It's like they co opted everybody so that it's like a weird, um, I don't know. That, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, like when you were up there and I forgot what you even said, you might have just said like, said I, have, uh, I live with four gorillas in the valley. That's right. It was like a monkey thing. Can, and, can and I it, ask you, could you? Maybe tell me where that that was. I completely stole that line because uh -huh. we end up at that point. We were we were doing like the Carson-y type. Like that was an interview. Yeah, it was right. an interview portion. Yeah, yeah. Do yeah, you yeah. know that if you watch this, if you watch Sanford and Sons, like he has several different reiterations of that joke. And uh -huh. so I was doing a, like a I was doing a Red Fox like homage in my head, right? Right. right and right, so right. once every, and then again, uh, once everyone lost their shit. Oh, I, I loved it because I went, oh, these people don't even like, they're not even students of comedy the way. No, no, no. And then I tried to give them this, right? I uh -huh. started doing this on stage. Uh -huh. which, big, you big dummy, cross one, cross you. And nobody no, got no, it. And no, I went, of course oh, not. These people don't really love comedy. No, so, no, no. So no. I did. <laughs> that's, that's the real thing about, that's the thing about a lot of people who say they um, want to be comedians and people who say they love comedy. They don't. They just know comedy in the most superficial manner. You know what I'm saying? They just know it as like a food that comes that somebody d delivers to them, and they're like, "I like this" or "I don't like this." And even people who want to do comedy are, are like that, like they're because they, it's very momentary. You know what I mean? But like someone like you, uh, someone like me, is gonna be like really nerdy and obsessive about that shit and just start going back. You know what I mean? Just be like, "All right, if it's like this now, what was it like back then?" And then you could just start saying, "Oh, dude, everybody's ripping this guy up." You know what I mean? You start We're saying like, thieves. "Everybody's ripping everybody. Everybody's ripping off Pryor. Everybody's ripping off uh, Red Fox for sure." Huge, you know, you actually see the whole line of comedians. Everybody's ripping off, and then it explodes, right? And, yeah. comedy explodes. and if you follow that shit or understand, then it, uh, I think it makes you humble. You know it, what I mean? It, it makes me. It's the love of art to me. Is that art is should it's it's all well. Everything is an imitation of something else, but the truest form of art is its purest form of imitation, which it should be like if I'm. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's a it's a copy of it's a complete copy of someone else, but yeah. it, you it, you put your own art, your own pain and tragedy and experiences on the world of it, and so that it works. It's like Kobe Bryant did exactly what Michael Jordan was trying to do if you watch their games, but they sure. don't look exactly the same because Kobe Bryant put Kobe Bryant's passion into it. You, you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, of course. There's like. Um uh there's like sort of like uh something called let's say you would call it like a universal like something that we all achieve wait one second i'm opening the window ah, like you know what i mean like 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 um like form right there's a perfect form like a technique that where but everybody executes that form differently because everybody has a different body everybody has a different brain you know what i mean everybody has a different way so the form the the execution of the thing is reach in an infinite amount of ways but the thing itself is a universal it's like we're all otherwise it wouldn't make any sense you know what i mean it's like that, that's kind of like if there was no formal rules to basketball and it was just a bunch of guys doing cool stuff with the ball you know what i mean there's like nothing to put a reference on it you know what i mean like that's called have regular season nba basketball. yeah exactly <laughs> which is gone by the way <laughs> there's no there's no such thing anymore <laughs> that's well, i'll tell you this man it, for me, I learned this very important lesson. Uh, I grew up in a place uh, doing comedy where on a Thursday night, it, it's not uncommon for the place to be packed of uh, where? a real audience. Uh, All right. And then uh, in, in Newport News, Virginia, where me, me and Stephen ah. got started. Oh, that's right, Virginia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So uh, one of the comedy clubs, like, uh, it's probably on the C circuit. 
I would say, because I guess the A circuits, the B circuit, and probably on the C circuit. Um, but like uh, everybody started there. It would be where if we started going on the road, that would be the first type of clubs that would be booking us. Um, mm-hmm. But on Thursday nights, this is the type of place where people come to see the shows on the weekends, not caring who the headliner is, because they know they're going to get a quality show. Right. And so we got to open mic in front of audiences, which just completely uh, changes your um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. my arrogance in comedy comes from that. And what uh, and I guess I say all that to say is, you know, you start off and you you get into beefs with other comics. So you don't like another comic for no particular reason. And the number one great equalizer I love of comedy is, is that I can absolutely hate your guts. But if you said, go fuck yourself, Devontae, I hope your mother drops dead. And then you turn around and they call your name and you walk on stage. And if I, I can hear the audience. The audience tells me if you're funny or not. Right. So that quashes all of my personal feelings about yep. you. And so I love that about comedy. And, I, and so that taught me that, you know, at first, you know, hey, uh, at first I wasn't a fan of Seinfeld. And now I watched that last special that came out a couple weeks ago. And I, it made me happy in a way that I, I can't explain why. Because why? I love the 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 discipline that he takes to be Jerry Seinfeld. Mm-hmm. I can never do that. I can never that, be a Mulaney. But I now have I can recognize the discipline of other forms of this craft. And so I love any great comic. Even if I don't really like like even comics that we go on the, the scene here, most of the time I only want to listen to two or three minutes of your stuff anyway. And right, that'll right. tell me if I like like you or if I like respect you. I don't know. It's it's very intimate, but once you say something real, and I can tell that you have the discipline of challenging your truth, oh man, I'm behind you 100. percent Even if I don't fucking like you, like <laughs> right. Well, that actually that's very similar. What happened with me Seinfeld is like you know Seinfeld. I didn't know his work that much. I just knew you know what I saw on Seinfeld and whatever. But when I saw um, the documentary Comedian, you ever see that? I have thing? not. Oh, it's like came out in 2002. So it was right after the Seinfeld was over. And it, the whole documentary is basically about Seinfeld uh, writing a new hour, like just scrapping all his old shit and just writing a new hour. And then him being, and it actually, it's kind of funny because it um, compared him to an up and coming comic. Like, so he's kind of like hitting like his version of Mike's, which is just doing guest spots or whatever, you know, like his, and just like seeing him hammering and like, and bombing sometimes, you know, cause he's like working out new bits. And then you see this other guy fucking his rise to, uh, fame and stuff and they really kind of did that guy dirty because they edited the movie to make it look like he was a total dick and that Seinfeld was like a god <laughs> like, an, like an amazing person but the thing that really impressed me about Seinfeld and that got me on board with him was his work ethic that movie shows his work ethic it shows his work ethic and if you're a comic you see that and you go okay he grinds man the guy grinds and the thing is he had no he fucking had no reason to do this you know what I mean? he had all the money in the world he had fucking no reason at all to write a new hour, but he had to. He's sick. He had to write a new hour. hour. He's sick. He's a sick, he's a sick person. He's a comic. He's a right. sick, he's a, sick it's, person. It's a neurosis. It's, yeah, it's, he had to. And the fact that he, could, he scrapped all his shit and started over and was showing the process and was doing it, and it just showed me that, all right, this guy's a comic. You know, that's the thing. It's like, so I can respect him. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't really care about him as a person. And, and like, and I like his jokes, do with man. Me. Yeah, and his jokes are fucking, he has a good structure. He's a master of the fucking structure. You know what I mean? He's a master joke writer. Yeah, so I, and I, I don't know. It's, I think when it comes down to it, it's like when you really, if you are an artist and you have a craft and you respect the craft, you recognize it in other people. You know what I mean? So that actually yeah. transcends the normal sort of social shit of like, do I like It's him? interesting, I like man. I love, I love the fact that uh, one of my little, uh, you know, I'm trying to fuck you lines is when I say, <laughs> this is my, this is my line. This is my line. Patented, copyrighted. Oh man. You know, I just love getting a chance to get out and see different kinds of art forms. Cause like, you know, I'm just used to comedy. And so when I can see other artists, it, should, uh, it just blows my mind. Oh, yeah, and like oh, immediately yeah. the other reaction just, but I do mean that, but I'm also, right, right, mean, right. I'm also manipulating you, but I do mean that. Like, it's yes. so interesting to see how other artists uh, um, try to try to tell their truth or whatnot, you know? Um, yeah, I'm I hated my pants Seinfeld, off. but damn, Seinfeld, dude, I love that show now. If that's not such a, like, the right, if you understand how to write a joke, it mm-hmm. is, like, I, you can't, like, I got a buddy who just started doing comedy back home who I went to high school with. 
And he was telling me, I tweeted like, hey, I love the uh, Seinfeld special. And he was like, ah, fuck that guy. He's a smug guy, guy, guy. And I went, now, I, I, I was, I, I've been doing this for six years now. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of myself. I was mature enough. I didn't even re to respond to the tweet. I went, oh, he hasn't, he hasn't done enough work yet to put right. in the quality to even be able to watch a show like Seinfeld and go, holy shit, him and Larry David are kind of gods. Like, oh, to be able to geniuses. write that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be able to do that, yeah, definitely. Or to find the, 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 for me, it's interesting. Like my comedy comes from like observational, like I did this and so I saw this. I find it blows my mind how like him or Mulaney can just take like, uh, uh, you know, can go into like a six minute or a five minute bit about the cell, or, like a voicemail or how uh, like a beat or like those small things that bother us. But like my brain would never even find that funny or figure out how to put that into comedy. That actually reminds me a lot of, um, do you know Richard Jenny? Dude, Richard Jenny was like, uh, he would take, yeah, he would just like hammer tags out of a premise. Like that was just his thing. It would just like do one thing and just be like tag, 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 tag. Like it's actually amazing to see do it where you're like, how many other things can he, you know, just like you, just the ability to just stretch a bit so that you just, yeah, he's actually um, one of the best, um, what a, one of the best comics I think that um, blew his brains out <laughs> actually actually ended up blowing his brains out. He had his crazy. I, I talked about this dude. He literally was like nobody knew it was going to happen. His last words were to I think were I'll be right down or something like she was cooking breakfast downstairs. They had Thank just, you. You know what I mean? That's and, how I started this. To yeah, that, exactly. Said, that is how I, if I committed suicide, that's what it would be. That's it what would you be like. Do. What happened to Devonte? Oh, the Cowboys yes. missed the playoffs again, and he just couldn't do it. I'm yeah. Like what? Like he had just like, got booked at like uh, at the Apollo. Yeah, like but he, he, he had just, just found. Do it. Yep, he just found the love of his life. Uh, he said, uh, "I love you." <laughs> Thank or you for or the Cowboys do win the Super Bowl, and I'm like, "This is never gonna get better than this." <laughs> and you did it. Now I've seen it. Everything. Do you ever remember the cartoons a long time ago where like something wacky would happen at the end and then like there'd be a bystander like a turtle or something and he'd be like turn to the camera and be like now I've seen everything and then he puts <laughs> a gun to his head like that was a weird joke they had back in the day of like if you've seen it all you might as well just blow your brains <laughs> like I'm gonna have a, to look into that that's Would an interesting know, concept cartoons I was thinking about uh because I, I like to say that I uh I am a natural hater mm -hmm. Um, and I don't hate things um, for any racial, religious, creed. For, I hate indiscriminately. Like, I'm going to tell you, one of the yeah. people that I hate the most in this world is Common, Miraculous. I don't know why I hate him. I've never been able to explain why I hate him. But anytime I see his fucking little face on TV, I get this little, it just, I just anger curdles inside of me. And I want him dead. And I think that's okay. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, 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 hold on. Which common, which common, because you got your 90s era. All of them. All yeah. of them. I thought that you got, he should have got shot in a gang war in the 90s. And so I shouldn't have had to deal with common in the 2000s. And now you see. Wait, you didn't like his like shift to the electro sort of Jimi Hendrix kind of, you didn't like it. <laughs> you weren't into that? Introducing the new yeah. HP yeah, the Intel word. Core <laughs> into L. It what brings your about, brains as we Yeah, what about John Wick, L. Common, man? What about... <laughs> if somebody would Wick. just get Common for me, like that, like, I would have a list, like, I see, this is why I can't be a dictator. Because I'd be the best, like, that's why I love Burr's bit. Would you, would wait, would you, are you saying people you would put people. Common to death if you were a dictator? Yes. You would be like, yes, no, publicly, <laughs> rounding publicly. up. Publicly, the people were rounding Publicly. Up, uh, number one, and, common. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, what people will say is the president executed common in the Rose Garden today. Yep. And after doing so, uh, looked in the camera and said, he know what he did. And then I walked back into my office. <laughs> and then That's the president the looked into the camera. <laughs> he and know what he did. <laughs> and then the president, after shooting common in the head, uh, turned the gun on himself and said, well, that's it for me. <laughs> Blew his well, brains out. That's all, folks. <laughs> that's all, folks. It was a reference to the early 20th century Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> okay, so, dude. Okay, so I was thinking about this the other day. Back to my hater point. Uh, uh, so they're making Space Jam 2 with LeBron James, right? Which yeah, uh, yeah. doesn't make any sense. Okay. Right. Uh, but th the other reason why this makes no sense is how old are you, Rojan? I'm 42. I'm turning 42. Okay, you're 42. I'm 27, yeah. right? Uh -huh. I barely 
like I was the I'm the last I'm in this last 20 I would say 25 to 31 year olds are the last group of kids that grew up in your reference time as well and right. still have a reference point so we remember dial up and then sure. high speed internet right. so no none of these kids know who the fuck any of these Looney Tune characters are. So nope. the jokes aren't, like, if you don't know that, that's all I'm talking to pick. If you don't, so to me, I'm like, get the fuck out of here. What are they going to do with this? There's, the references aren't going to be there. The kids don't know these mm -hmm. characters. You might know Bugs Bunny. That's about it, right? Is, the, is, is Pepe Le Pew going to be around? I hope, I hope so. Well, hope. he's a rapist, so I think they might have gotten canceled. They might have... <laughs> <laughs> Straight up, I feel like his game was just raping cats. That was like, <laughs> that's all. First of all, <laughs> which is hilarious. I think everyone's game. That's that's still people's <laughs> game. Well, first of all, how many times have I texted uh, you? Smoke question mark. Uh, I realized uh, a few <laughs> is that your Pepe Le Pew? <laughs> that's my Pepe Le Pew. I'm gonna drug you with marijuana. Come here. Do you want to smoke this marijuana? So that you're more likely to smoke weed with me. I think people. I think that's the last still legal like. Because <laughs> you can't even say like, well, you know, it's like you know. No, like, but that's what I'm saying. Else. You know what? My, I'm of the firm belief that I understand what you're saying. Where like the kids won't have references to this shit because they're all about. But because of the nature of our culture now, where it's like they're trying to hide everything, like they're trying to hide the past. They're trying to like it actually makes it more attractive. So all it's, that stuff. Here's the thing. Instead of Daffy Duck blowing his bill off, he should just like. OD on Xanax a couple times. Just a couple of Xanax <laughs> OD. Like, just yeah, make it be, The thing is, art is going to get more... Art is a reaction to the culture, right? So the dominant culture is all about, like, okay, now we all say the right words to everybody. We don't say these bad things. We don't do that. It's like, the art is going to reflect that. You know what I mean? They're going to want... People are going to naturally want to do that. Like, one of the craziest things right now going on is that, uh, like, teens, like, teens, like, let's say, like, 14, 15, 16 like to about like 21, that age group, there's like uh, the bad boys or whatever of that group are like fucking hardcore conservatives. So they're like these kids, it's hilarious. It's these kids who are like, because the dominant society, their parents, all that, they're like all liberal fucking like, you know, gay marriage and like everything's awesome and trans rights and everything. So these kids are like, it's all about the family. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, it's all about, about the family. <laughs> the kids are getting married at eighteen. No, they like don't have sex. They're like, we don't. We're not going to have sex until we find. You know, well, that also explains school shootings. So those exactly. Well, they're all drugged up. They're all pilled up. So they're all pilled up. But so you know, I just think no matter oh, what, meth, by just, the way, they're all and, and we have to be specific about what this pill is. It's meth, because right. when I was little, you used to hear the word Ritalin. You don't hear Ritalin anymore, right? Because uh -huh. they got better Ritalin. They got Addy, uh -huh. and so. These kids are just messed the fuck up. It just, yeah. I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah, that's meth all it is. Meth is good. Meth is, <laughs> clean meth is good. That's well, what I'm, they should say on these posters. Like, listen, give your kids some clean meth. Man, I think it's just too many because there's all the antidepressants and then there's all the fucking anti, uh, Xanax and shit, anti-anxiety. And I think it's when First you start- all, Xanax is the greatest drug that I think has ever been created in a laboratory. Um, oh, really? I would so, say. Well, how do you feel when you take it? Like it makes you feel uh, good. Oh my God, Xanax! Is, listen, if you were on a, if you took a bar of Xanax, right, mm -hmm. and your house caught on fire, mm -hmm. you'd have this thought: Damn, my house is on fire. Yeah, you'd be. Hmm. Damn, but I'm good. <laughs> I mean, there's a good chance you might have started that fire if you take it. No, 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 no. You take it. <laughs> you're like, but I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, the but you'll still be good. like, yeah. But I no, think I mean um, Xanax in small doses. I think is uh, is really good. I think, but like like even one whole bar of Xanax, no human. There's no need for one human being to take a bar of Xanax unless you're going to an international flight. But outside of that, uh, yeah, it's in small doses. I think Xanax is an amazing drug. Uh, it's just that you got to tell people like, hey, just take like a third of this pill, or even a quarter of this pill, or even maybe just a fifth of this pill. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have an amazing day. Because anxiety is a motherfucker. Well, yes. So I don't actually think I suffer from general anxiety. So when I take Xanax, it doesn't really, I don't, I don't feel any. Like, I only get sleepy. Like, I don't get a good feeling. So I think yeah, a lot that's of. What the, that's what it is. Rojan, no. You feel relaxed, right? You feel like really Yeah, like, but hey. nothing, nothing yeah, where I'm like. It doesn't feel That's, any like so. What I'm trying to say is that like it's supposed to make you feel like lollipops and gumdrops. It's supposed to make you just feel hey man. 
But even that, not really. Like, no. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's actually um, people who have anxiety, that's why they like Xanax because it relieves it. That's what feels good. You know oh, I mean? yeah. So, so it's probably just relieving your natural anxiety and that's why it feels so good. You know what I mean? Um, I actually like to create anxiety. <laughs> personally <laughs> like i like to i like to get the high you know like so high that i'm like anxious and stuff you know i like to oh no one gets as high yeah. as me baby and parliament funkadelic high i just like uh uh the, the, yeah no the xanax is something i like to keep i like to keep a couple xanax on me for emergency situations like uh now um mm -hmm. but also i like to keep i have a go bag like you know how people have like <laughs> We have a log box of a, a little sampling of any what's drug your, that I like. What's in your go bag? What's it? Everything. Uh, a couple caps of shrooms. Uh -huh. uh, at one point, I'd have uh, put an eight ball in there. Uh, you got it. You just you don't know. And I'll tell you this. Uh, America, uh, cocaine is always currency anywhere you go in the world. So even if I had to walk my ass across the Rio Grande River, when I got there, if I pulled out that rock, it's gonna get me in the in the middle of a pandemic. That's gonna get me somewhere. So yeah. Uh, now uh, my go bag is empty now. I do want to say oh, okay. that. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> the go bag so is hungry. gone. The yeah, the go bag <laughs> and the whole coke and storage is gone. Um, uh, America has snorted all of the. I've been, I've been told on good authority that America has has used all the cocaine that the world had had in supply, and that. Oh. Um, that yeah, doesn't surprise me. Getting yeah. across the border right now. Uh, there's, and so if you understand economics, that tells you how serious this uh, economic oh, yeah. crisis is about to be. Right. But you no know, it also tells across the borders. Well, that's because you, that also tells you how serious it is when you just shut things down. You're right. It's not that there isn't demand or supply. You know what I mean? There's plenty of people who want it. And there's plenty of it to, to get it to, you know what I'm saying? It's just that they Listen, can't get it. the same it. Mexican people that bring the cocaine are the same Mexican people who keep shitting in the romaine lettuce every four months and we have to stop getting that. And we're still getting that too, okay? Listen, all right? The I mean, same, they're essential. The same dude who shits in the romaine lettuce is the same dude. Because <laughs> that E. coli lettuce we have to stop eating every three to four months is the same guy that's putting the cocaine on the same bus. So that's not getting over. To me, it's not even a necessarily an essential items move. It's an economic... Oh, it's a necessity. The, you've yeah. shut the border down. And so, um, like, uh, Trump's a gangster. He understands how crime works. And America runs on crime. So America has to get the cocaine back across the border. And yeah. I think Trump understands that. Oh, yeah. um, and so on a big scale, be it cocaine or the NBA, uh, if things don't start happening soon, um, the people that really run this country are going to start uh, really making some, some, some decisions. Like, you know, when, J when they sent JFK on that parade in 63 down in Dallas, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, I think the thing is, what we're watching is a real, um, the fucking, it's just a partisan political shit show. You know what I'm saying? They're just taking this crisis and using it as an opportunity to get whatever they can for themselves and then try to get, used. basically what they want to do is like, use it against the other side in the election. You know what I mean? Like, it's all yeah, about the election. Roger, that's the TV show. I'm, you're talking about the TV show, American Democracy. I'm not even talking about that. I'm uh -huh. talking about... The, the people who produce the TV show. Like, there is something really um, critical happening. I do. Oh, no, no. I think no, no, that's what crisis. I meant. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. I think that the TV show that they're showing, uh, like, you know what I mean? Like, so. Well, I, here, let me, uh, let me, let me, let me. Um, Cocaine let me can't get across the border. Right. That's, that's not politics. That's, America runs on cocaine and Duncan. Right, and right, so, right, 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 right. <laughs> No, no. So I understand that. So, so here, let me let me give you an example of how I understand what you're saying. Um, so during the impeachment, right? During during the impeachment, um, not the trial, but the House. Damn, that's fucked part. up. That okay. did happen. I forgot about that. I thought you right, were, right. Uh, okay, good. So here, so, so the impeachment, so the impeachment, the whole thing over Ukraine. That's the TV show. Okay, that was the TV show. That's like what we're showing everybody. Everybody's like, ah, oh, that's the pro wrestling thing, right? <clears throat> Meanwhile, and this is a fact. While that's going on. While they were trying, that they were saying this man should be impeached, they passed his military budget. They expanded his powers under the Patriot Act. They extended his powers under the, uh, it's called the NDAA, where he can basically detain anybody if they're a terrorist indefinitely without any due process. Oh, yeah, National Defense Authorization yeah, Na Act. National NDAA. But again, so, they, so why, so I ask yourself. I motherfucker. I know. And. Not only that, motherfucking House Democrats, who were the ones impeaching him, they fucking voted for this shit. They all yeah. voted for it, okay? So then ask yourself, if this guy is really a Putin, he's like a puppet of Putin, 
he's right. If he's really a traitor to the United States, why are you giving him the largest military budget that we have ever had a space force? Why are you giving him that wall? Why are you giving him all this stuff? You know what I mean? So that's so, the reality. You know what I'm saying? Right, so I understand what you're saying. Questions, Rogan. No, now answer right, right, right. your question. I have no questions there. I'm just saying I understand. No, no, no. And let's let's it. answer these hypotheticals. We're oh, what? Because there the are, it's answer. a grift. That's what I was saying earlier. It's, I was saying I basically was saying earlier. It's the, between the two of them. There, it's a grift. The whole thing is a grift, right? Like that. And then there's this pro wrestling shit that's going on that gets everybody distracted from the real thing going on. Like I get all that. Um, I, but I there's a I, there's a larger there's a whole other thing going on where yes the producers exactly like you're saying they're like for example California California is going to push this shit as far as it can go <laughs> they're going to take this lockdown and I'm supporting Governor go. New Governor Batman as Dave Chappelle called please Governor I'm Batman <laughs> I don't want to go to work until October. And even then, I'm going to get some unemployment and get, keep it extended and maybe do a, a, tour, a comedy tour of dive bars in the Southwest. Like, I don't give a shit. Fuck it. Like, I mean, you know what I mean? I, right. Fuck it. That is part of how the cocaine won't get here. So if, you want, <laughs> so if you want that cocaine, the lockdown is not going to get you your cocaine. You know what I'm saying? I think it's like, a good trade-off. I'll take that trade. Would you, off, you know? okay? So then, then there you go. That's the simple economics there. It's like what you're saying about the lifeblood of this country, you know, about the cocaine. That it, you know, that's the sacrifice that we have to make. But you gotta yeah. understand. I, you gotta understand this, and I want, and I tell people this on stage sometimes before I get political. I'm gonna like as I tell you my views. I don't, I shouldn't vote because yeah. I go into the booth with the joker mentality of, I just want to see it all burn anyway. Right. So right, like, right, my, right. I'm not even, like, I'm rooting for chaos. Like, I, oh, I'm, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chaos you're candidate, an, right? You're and a child so, of chaos. Oh yeah, I understand. I don't, I don't want, I want, I want, uh, I'm, I'm going for the Great Depression. I'm rooting for right. a Great Depression. I'm rooting right. for people to, to be killing people in marauders in the street. I think that is the only way to get the, the true change and harmony that, I, that I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. And so anything outside of that to me is boring. And, and, and I uh, will continue to, to play off. But as, as, as soon as we start like, killing people in the streets, um, like if Jeff Bezos gets kidnapped and like get held ha ransom somewhere, yeah. oh man, I'm going out in the street. I'm about it. But until they do that, leave me the fuck alone. I'll vote for Trump. He, I just got his check yesterday. Fuck you, <laughs> leave me alone. Until you fucking go kidnap uh, fucking Mark Cuban, like leave me alone. Oh, like, until you guys are ready to do that, it, like, I don't give a shit. Like, let them keep fucking you in the ass. I'm a comic. Like, I, I'm a dirty comic. I, right. I, I like my lifestyle. Um, uh, yeah. But people, but people are, are, are silly to believe that this thing is, is... Dude, I think that if you look at the, the way that history kind of works, um, economically, this can't... Like, if they can... If we can get back to normal without complete chaos in a, in, a, in a real war, then that'll scare the shit out of me because that'll mean that they figured out how to manipulate life because one plus one doesn't give you two. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like we should, like there's has to be great consequences for the entire production of the world stopping. So if we get back started and without very much disruption, I'm gonna go, God damn, these motherfuckers have really fucking uh, you know, this isn't real life, and that's impressive, but that'll scare the shit out of me. So, oh, yeah. uh, really, depression in war is, like, a good thing. That means that they're not, like, our master overlords quite yet. Yeah, but I would also say it's been argued um, that all the past depressions and war in the past are part of the uh, people who running who run things. That It is part of their... That's what they do. That isn't that the part of the natural cycle. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, so but it makes so, sense though. But that's natural, right? Like, how no, do you it's not natural. It's, it's started after you crash it. You go fuck somebody else up. Like, I get war. War makes sense, right? Like, but that's also you know I mean? a construct of those people. So that depression war cycle is proof that you know they have that much whatever whoever they are. Basically, the people like you know the military industrial complex, whoever the fuck. Like that's. Basically, and it basically goes all the way back to Rome. Like that shit is, you can actually see. I'm trying to make America great again, okay? And I'm America's already to... great. America's <laughs> fucking great, man. America is the greatest country in the goddamn. You understand nah, that two hundred times the military. For like, we've been slipping for like, I mean, like us as people. Like yeah, I'm but crazy, that's we right? have a long like, I want to go back to a plant where our we president got a... Bush, where he could throw a fucking pitch off the mound 
uh, right after 9-11, like from the top of the mound with a Kevlar vest and like hit the guy right behind the diamond. Like that, like we got to get back to being those type of Americans. Like as black people, we got to get back to not going out to like hanging out and being like, ah, yeah, why yeah. don't they like us? Like when are we going to stop saying like, Nobody likes black people. You can go all around the world. They've never liked black people all around the world. You know who the only people who like black people are? The people in your family. Black people don't even like black people. So when are we going to stop whining? Like, I've been watching this show on HBO, The Plot Against America, uh, mm -hmm. and it's revisionist history by David Simon of uh, if uh, Lindbergh had uh, ran against Roosevelt and uh, what would have happened if we didn't intervene in the war. And I loved it because it took... Well, <laughs> It really took like a lot of things that happened to black people in that time and it flipped it and it put and it into put it what Jewish, people. Jewish people. And right. so it was so cool to watch it not be something that you expected to happen to your people, but in America, even though way worse things were happening at that same time period yeah. in Europe to their own people. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, um, it, it just showed me what I really saw from that show was uh, the network of uh, what the, the, what I love about the Jewish community is their network of their own community. Um, and it's like, hey guys, no one's ever gonna come help you. We've got four years of a president who hates Latinos, right? God forbid, I'm sorry, I love Bad Bunny like everybody else loves Bad Bunny, but we've got maybe another four years of a president who's not really focused on uh, you know, economic policies that impact us. We can, we can build something in this time uh, instead of like, you know, because if you're always fighting, you can't be building. That's my biggest issue is, and it's certainly if you're fighting for nothing, right? right. Um, so uh, before I go all uh, <laughs> off the grid, I just, I think people have to, I'm tired of people whining about injustices because there's injustices anywhere without a real plan of saying what you're gonna do about it. Because no matter what you do, me and you having this conversation right now through these technologies, we are uh, uh, arborers of slavery in a part of the world that we don't think about. And in oh, yeah. two and three generations, our grandchildren are gonna look at us like we were monsters. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's all I'm saying is things are always gonna suck. But like, if, if you don't come to me with a plan about making it suck less, then I'm, I'm gonna watch sports sooner than get high. Leave me alone. Yeah, man. I mean, you said a lot there. And there's, <laughs> there's a lot to unpack. And it's all on video, so we can go back and look at the tape. No, <laughs> we can go and do a play-by-play -play of Devontae's brain. Here we go. Let's start with it. Uh, that'd be awesome. We're going to do that soon. We're going to be able to just rewind it and then put okay, the yellow. Yeah, Make sure you get the like, yellows. Ooh, look at the face he made right there when he said that. <laughs> like, scared, like, at, at this moment, he scared himself and had to backtrack. He actually back. He actually got it. And he should have known. He should have known. He should have gone forward. He should have leaned in next time. See, that's, you watch tape on yourself and you get better. You're like, fuck, fuck, I should have gone harder there. <laughs> you want to stay Well, one of the first things you said I want to address <coughs> is that everybody hates black people, which, okay, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I will, I'll grant you that because that is where, how we got where we are. But on the other hand, I'm going to tell you that everything is like, just like, listen, this is a, like a thing I like to joke about all the time is that the original Yang Yang is actually black and yellow, okay? <laughs> his, white, his white motherfuckers came and gen gentrified the Yin Yang. So they got their white stuff in there, but they had nothing to do with it. Uh, but like, just the idea that like, look, uh, there's no duality in this world, really. There is and there isn't, right? Everything is and isn't, right? Like that's, that's why we're comics. Because we see the contradiction and we see the hypocrisy of people who take a stand and go like, I'm good or whatever. And you go, no, you're not. You're the worst. Anybody says they're good is the worst person ever. You know what I mean? And that's the- in Check my text messages. Dear, dear God. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that was, that what makes us us. So on the same level of like, yes, black people, people do hate them and have hated them. People fucking love black people. Like, that, that people fucking love black people more than they love any other people. <laughs> people they really do. And this is the thing, I think Kurt Metzger talks about this a lot, but this is the thing I've been, talking about all the time like is like there's i mean black black is american like there's no real america they black it's not even african america you know what i mean it's not african it's not in, wow like, wow black is american. It's, it's distinctly my american. god yeah yeah it's distinctly american is what everybody wants to be in america right it's like right. What everybody wants to be because that is actually because everything else is either dorky and lame and mainstream like the thing that's like dominant blah 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 or it's like some variant of an immigrant cultural thing you know like mob mob culture fucking fucking kung fu or some shit you know like just some variant of like you kind of but black people had to, created shit here there's like distinct it's like the actual real american thing black people black people are a mix of african 
white and Native American and, and Latin and basically everything, basically everything that makes this guy Asian, like everything that came into this country just basically mixes in and becomes black, right? So that is what it is. So given that, I think the thing, the, to me, the um, failure of our culture is to, is like, it, it's, it's like, it's kind of like, um, it's like if you your kid was like molested or you were molested as a kid. I mean, I was, but if you were molested as a kid and then you're kind of like- I got, a, I got house, the good molestation and, uh, though. I, I, yeah, was yeah, no, me too. I got the good molestation. Yeah, yeah, I got the good one too. I, I don't even have bits about it. It's not worth having, you know what I mean? It's, it's not, it's, it's not. not. I no, didn't, no, 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 that's why I was I, like, like, I don't want to see those titties. And I was like, oh yeah. yeah. And it wasn't until like three months ago. I was like, oh yeah, that lady showed me her titties. That was definitely like molested. And I was yeah, like, yeah, that's like eh, mild, it's not even worth telling mild. my mom about or anybody about. No need. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyways, all I'm saying is like, imagine it's like, it's like living in a house where you're molested <coughs> and the whole time you're just kind of acting like everything's great. You know what I mean? And that's what I feel like the state of our culture is, especially when it comes to black people and race in general, right? Like, it's like, it's like this idea of like, that's what Obama in a way was set us back because it, we, oh, were given, man, uh, we were given, we were given powerful. A, we were given a, a, a figurehead. We were given a symbol. Yeah, you Obama give reality. Was, you know what I mean, dude? You sound like uh, you sound like uh, you sound like some. You sound like you've been to the meeting um of black clan meeting. That, no, <laughs> no I'm just kidding. you sound like you've been to the meeting of black people that even uh, black people don't tell all the black people about. Ah. Uh. <laughs> I like oh, we, I, can't, we can't tell them all this. I was trying know. to I was working on a bit where I was trying to be a, a, the Asian hotep. Like I, <laughs> I try to be Asian. Well, I'll tell you this is what I found <laughs> like, out about uh I'll tell you this. Uh Asians are the new niggas of the world. Uh I see it. Uh because uh, we've I think my gen my uh, I, I think our people I think we're done. Obama has received we have largely Obama has recessed I know with my own feelings, and I think the way I see it culturally, I think Obama recessed uh, African Americans into, you know, I think we're now interested more into being um, economically and fiscally sustainable um, and being, uh, I think we're trying to build foundational wealth. I think that is something that's actually conversations that I'm hearing all the time. I'm yeah. seeing it with my friend, I'm seeing it in entre like, and so we're trying to figure out how to build, build uh things and so even if you look at our art most of most of rap is just pop music's trash right and so when i've moved out here to the west coast what i found is that the new niggas that i see are, are these asian kids um uh now largely the issue is that they're all loaded and so right. the struggle isn't yeah, very that's, authentic that's what i was gonna say <laughs> yeah. struggle, but their struggle is there comes from being loaded and not being seen sure. uh, and so they're the uh they they don't have identities because their uh, Asian culture doesn't allow for very much expression of self. And so what I'm seeing out here is, I love it, I, and, and it reminds me of what I saw of my brothers in the night. Like, cause uh, so I was born in '93. My my I have both my I have older brothers that are your age. I have a brother that's 42 and a brother that's 39, and then I have a brother that's uh, 30, and so I'm 27, uh, and then I'm a twin as well. So. Uh, I remember being in the 90s, like this whole Jordan Bulls era, like I was five in 98, but I remember all that shit because through my brothers and I remember like Wu-Tang and I remember like the Philly Blunts and I remember the FUBUs and the starter jackets and I remember because and I remember the Sega and the NBA Jam because I had the brothers in the house. And so I'm just saying that same energy and how cool and the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing, I'm seeing it from Asian, young Asian kids. I'm seeing how cool, I'll look at some of the things that they do and I go, holy fucking shit, that is so cool. And I'm starting to see uh, my, you know, I'm starting to see uh, uh, blacks, we're looking east and we're going, well, what are they doing east? And we're bringing that and we're, and, and I mean, it's always been done. Well, that's what I was okay. saying, black and yellow, yin yang. That's what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I, and the white man has been trying to split Afro-Asian unity since the beginning. <laughs> he said there's a beginning of colonialism. So that was the plan. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. But like, look, no, look about the uh, influence of Bruce Lee on the culture. I mean, you're young, man. But so, so you know, oh, yeah, my, yeah, dad, yeah. Oh, yeah. my dad know. comes from that area. And you know old heads. You know what I mean? I'm sure you know old heads who wear that fucking Chinese shit. Oh, you got cut out. Oh, no. Uh, 
Oh man, anyways, you're right, yeah. dude. I didn't I even just, realize all that. You know those old there's those, those old black dudes who fucking love Chinese culture, and of course Wu Tang would have came out. Of, that comes out of that. You know what I mean? Those are the kids of those guys. Like so, that has been around for a long time. And the way I look at it is like Bruce Lee is the first non-white guy on screen beating the shit out of white people that like we all saw, like that people saw. And that must have just that blown that just blew their minds away. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the idea just like was like what? And he was like a little guy, you know, he's like a smaller dude. And don't forget, America had been at war in Asia for fucking since the 1900s. They were they nuked Japan, and not only did they nuke Japan, they went to Korea after that, right? And then after that, they went to Vietnam. Like, and then on the tail of that, it comes Bruce Lee. You know what I'm saying? Like an Asian man. That, so this whole, the whole, these whole, all these generations of people, all they knew of the Asian man was that's who we were fighting overseas, right? Yeah. That's who we were fighting overseas. The Korean War is the first war with a, a desegregated infantry. The, like, you know what I mean? So like part of the conquest or the history of fighting in Asia is, is wrapped up in the race relations of America. So the first time they went into Korea, they were like, we're doing Dude. a great thing. We desegregated the infantry. You know what I mean? Like we actually did a great thing, you know? And you know what's crazy? And for uh, us, the way I'll, I'll, I'll bring it, uh, damn, dude, I'm getting, you're, you're fucking digging deep here. You're right. Because for our, for my people, it was the first time that we went into um, these, these countries and uh, you saw a different part of the world. And yeah. if you know anything about Vietnam, <laughs> they just getting high and they're like, we ain't fucking fighting. Like, we, like yeah. after a certain point, they were like, we're going over and they were just fucking and sucking over there and partying. Yeah. And so all my uncles and all your, all your relatives that come back now that you bring it up, it's funny. Yeah. A large influence of dude, where I'm from, uh, like Cantonese food, it's huge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like in Virginia yeah, yeah, yeah. and this small town, like in this, in this little nub of Chesapeake, Hampton, West Virginia, can't I can tell you, we got some of the best Chinese food you ever fucking love. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And you're like, why do you know what Yaka mean is? And I ask a lot of people, I look for, and I realize when I go to Chinese restaurants, that uh, Chinese food and Cantonese food are different types of food. Those are, those right, are, right, right. That's different. And so I didn't realize that until you grow out. But then a lot of those people came into our community and they were able to build businesses into our community because A, they were brought here because we, we brought them back as wives uh, uh, or then they came back over or whatever. But you're right, dude. You're actually right. Because in my community, there's a lot of Asian businesses and restaurants, and we and we, uh, yeah, you're right. But we well, and it's more Filipino, uh, as you would say, the browner Asians, the Vietnamese, Cambodians, uh, yeah, not really Japanese, Chinese, Taiwanese, but yeah, so, yeah. yeah. The countries we went to war with, those countries, right. we all had a lot to show. Yeah, right. We yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, and it it goes back, man. And so China's part of that. It was it all started. Uh, Philippines was actually the first um, country that the United States. That was in the 1890s that we were like, oh fuck, we got to put this down. And so we basically conquered the Philippines. I mean, the Philippines basically had like yo-yos, like that was their weapon. <laughs> they, had, like, they had like discs on strings, and they're fighting dudes with fucking Gatling guns. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like so. Uh, like that's what happened there you know so that's just part of the the history you know so i think that's like one of the that's, i'm going back to like what i was talking about like being in a house where you're molested right it's like it's sort of like everything's great but you don't really know we're not exposed to the truth we're not really exposed to the truth of what the fuck it means we're like why the fuck am i here why the fuck are you here you know what the fuck well, is this like you know what i mean one of the things that are, are interesting to me about black people that bothers me about um, why are why are Japanese people still not yelling at the top of their lungs about internment camps? Because there are people who are still alive who are put in internment camps today, and I think that people don't realize that that happened a generation ago. And mm -hmm. I think that people think like, and so I think that like to me, it's dangerous that like, uh, and I might be speaking out of line here. I think Asian culture has found success um, economically and in financially instability, and have been able to grow you know, and, and find a, and find, make real leaps and bounds because you guys realize if you shut the fuck up, <laughs> like if you just shut the fuck up uh, and don't speak out um, and let the niggas do it, they'll just beat on the niggas the whole time. Um, <laughs> dude, it, it, to me, that happened and people don't know it. Like, and it's yeah. and people who aren't ignorant don't realize that there are people who are still alive today. Like my parents grew up talking about, like they tell us about 
um, being in a segregated Jim Crow South where they had to go into the back to get sandwiches. And then, so then you take that and add a generation to my grandmother yeah. who was a sharecropper, right? And then you add her parents were slaves. So you take my parents, my yeah. grandmother, and then my grandparents. That's, I am only two generations removed away from slavery. Yeah. And people don't realize that. But unless we have these conversations, then people, like you said, get to, we get to pretend like our kid didn't get molested. Yeah. We not only have these conversations, but then I think, okay, like one of the interesting things about, yeah, you were saying like Asians do well here, right? Like I think overall, if you took all the Asians, most of them are probably poor, just like any other people. You know what I mean? That's just a given, right? Like no matter uh, what. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's just how it breaks down. Like if you take a group of people, most of them are going to, like yeah, a few right. of them are going to be super rich. A few of them are going to be, you know, like, but most of them are going to be like poor, like, okay. Like, or middle class and under like, um, but the ones, you know, you got your Asians who do well and a lot of people point to like, okay, why do they do well? And then black people don't do well. And that's the whole model minority idea, right? Like these guys, these guys should be like us, like, or whatever, you know, like the whole thing. Mm. But I think the number one thing that people don't talk about, they always, race that's why race to me race is just actually the thing the magician uses to go like well I'm here while he's doing something over here like that's all it is it's just a screen because because it's visual because it's like it's very easy to be like hey they're different and they are and you're like okay yeah like but the thing is uh, i think they've done research on this shit and what they found is that if you just take race out just remove race right don't even that and look at the groups who succeed and why what you can associate them with is basically uh two parent homes that's the most common thing. So like, you know what I mean? Like, so the fam, if they had a good family, like some, a good like family, then usually the next generation do better and like so mm. on. So like, that's how you actually can, so that's just, if you take race out, like you said, the black family, you know, black people who had good families, you know, whatever, all of it, like it's just a yeah, no, and that's sort of, yeah. and so then what's not talked <clears throat> about is the decimation of the black family, right? Like we don't really talk about this as like a serious thing. We, we, I do motherfucker. Come oh, on. I, do, too. I know, I know you do. I'm just saying people, people like that's what, and that's what I'm talking about. This whole like molested household. That's what I mean. In the molested household. You know what is interesting, Rojan? Well, since you and I, uh, since, so let's skip a couple steps ahead then. All right. Do you think that, cause here's what I'll think, right? Cause I think I have an opposite theory. I think race is everything and mm -hmm. at the end all be all. I think that even in, I just, I remember this documentary of, there was this sea lion who was albino and all the other sea lions were on the way other end of the iceberg. And right. I went, you know what? <laughs> Things that are different from you are innately um, a danger to you, right? right? And so part of it, I think that it's, I think that it's kind of lazy of a thinking to say that race is not, um, um, to say race isn't important. I think that it is a part of our, our evolution and our sophistication to 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 recognize it and to pre and take a prejudice like i say being prejudiced is fine being racist is not everyone is prejudiced i'm prejudiced you better be prejudiced like bill as bill burst everyone's a little racist at night if you're not prejudiced you be, you're a fucking idiot like right. pre don't let your prejudices uh affect how uh you see the world though but at night you better a woman's better be prejudiced i don't care who it is if someone's right. coming out of the other side you know what i mean and so but, yes um but uh i would say this Look at the, uh, just since 1964, so you take the Civil Rights Act 1964, you take crack cocaine, you take decimation of black families, still get a president relatively within our first generation and a half of freedom, of true freedom, and probably first half generation of true freedom, because I would say that the crack, and then the census, and, the, and so the 80s, the, that 70s, 80s, that, that probably set us back again, because that was designed, and then we still hit a bank shot with a president. I think, you know, I go, Hmm. <laughs> maybe, mm -hmm. maybe they, maybe they know something we don't know about how fucking uh, insanely, innately powerful black people are culturally, um, in terms of what we can do in the sense of bringing people together. You know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe the people who who have a control or a sense of how control of the world works uh, might go, oh yeah, if I want to keep some disharmony in the world, we probably might want to keep these people from 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 getting their shit together, because because damn. Cause they get that shit together. That's a lot of love. That's a lot. That's a lot of love. Like I think that the beautiful thing about, and this is why I would say race is important. <clears throat> My black skin innately changes 
my entire life as sure as your I don't like the word yellow because I've never gotten that I don't That's get fine. that I don't well, well, I mean there's I, no I other way it. to but there's no other way to, to describe it's like a, it's, I, don't know, I'd rather, it's like a, I don't know but Asian is also like meaningless it doesn't mean right. you know what I mean like, but whatever you know, it's fine yeah your skin is mm-hmm. it is in it is, it is as meaningful as the way you see the world as the way that right. the sun rises and it right, can't right, right. change the way that being a woman changes the way that people see the world you know Right. And so I think that there's a magic in all of our different experiences oh, yeah. and holding on to it mm-hmm. and also just um, using that difference to grow forward. But I, mm-hmm. th- I don't like when we say that. I, think it's da- I just think it's dangerous when we right. tell people we're not different because we are different and right. people yeah. uh, are different for a reason. And guess what? Most people in the world don't want to mingle. And that's okay. Right. They don't want to co-mingle. Me and mm-hmm. you, we're different. That's cool. We're cool kids. And, uh, you know, like where I'm from, it's 50% white, 50% black, right? A lot mm-hmm. of people mingle. But guess mm-hmm. what? There's a lot of people who don't mingle. And they're right. not, we don't see them as terrible people because right. they don't, when they, when they come out and they, and they go to, and they go, they're at work or they're at the store, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not going to say anything. They're not going to do anything. They're not going to make you feel uncomfortable, but they don't like to be around people who aren't like them. And that's yeah. in every community. I don't you think know? We're outliers. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't exist or it doesn't mean anything. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, um, here, let me give you an example. Let me give you a context of what I'm talking about. All right. Um, so do you know about, um, you know about Bacon's Rebellion? Well, you must. You're in Virginia, yes. right? So, for, yes. so but, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so then you must know that after what happened after Bacon's Rebellion was the House of Commons in Virginia decided to pass a law that said, "Hmm, you know what we're gonna do? Uh, we're gonna make it so that white slaves, well, back then they were slaves, but white slaves could become citizens after a period of time, but black people, black slaves, could not because what they didn't like was the idea." that the black and white slaves united and try to overthrow the master. <laughs> that was like, that's not cool, right? Because there's so many of them. There's way more <laughs> than there are of us. So they're the, they, and there's, it's actually on record, man. They, they, they fucking, they knew what they were doing. Right. On record. And then right? you know what they did? They created, they, they, did, they didn't make these white people not white slaves. They just made them a little, they just gave them a couple cents. And they right. made them control They just black. created they a division. The yeah, they just created a division so that they were was no unity because unity right. was the danger, right? right? And the easiest to be, and yes, I agree that uh, race is important and people, that's why it works, right? That's why they could be like, white people, black people, you're different. And automatically they were like, well, but before that, there's also proof that they had to pass all these anti-miscegenation laws because they kept fucking and because they're all hanging out together all day working together. Of course they are. And they're going to have kids and they're going to go. So they had to pass. So there's, there's a Stop. lot of proof. There's Stop. a lot of proof. Them. Hey, I'm just Jefferson. saying, and this is the fucking uh, 17, what are we talking about? 1750, 60, you know, yeah. before America. So, so back then they like got <laughs> together. There's, I mean, there's written proof that they got together and we're like, we got to come up with something that will make sure that there's not another rebellion like this again. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I'm talking about in terms of like the bullshit of race. I'm not saying that racism, of course it's real. I'm good. Like but like it's, it's used as a weapon against well, the, the dichotomy of it, I would yes. say, it is used. It is used as a weapon, um, but I think that it's used as a weapon uh, uh, just for class. You know what I mean? But the more yeah. I, the, I will say this though: the more that I ascend in life, and I don't want to use the word ascend because <laughs> I don't have much of anything. But the more that I, <laughs> I, the more that I see of the world the less that I see racial harmony or racial, true racial oh. unity. So yeah. the more that I go into different rooms with people of different amounts of money, the less that I see what I thought was cool about. I, I, so back home, again, <laughs> everyone's poor and people fly Confederate flags and the governor has blackface and he's a Democrat, but he, God damn it. If I, I, if that is, people are more racially harmonious right. there than I can see here where people have money and they will lecture you about racial division. Yeah. And still not have 
um, uh, uh, diverse, you know, for me, sometimes it's always cool when I see people who do projects or uh, anytime I do projects or something and I look at my projects, uh, they're always diverse with women or people of color of different backgrounds or colors or thoughts than me. And that's never a thought that I have of like, oh, I need to get this person or get that. Like, I, it's never uh, objective. It's just, I think this person is cool, right? Yeah. And so, you know, if that's just naturally not happening in your production or naturally not happening in your mind, then, um, you know, if you're, if you're saying, oh, I have to, we have to make a diversity hire or, oh, right. I need a black idea or, oh, I need a woman's idea. Right. That's kind of racist, too. That is very racist. Common. I think it's really racist. It's, 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 I think it's, it's more offensive than saying, I don't fuck with your type of people anyway. Like, you yeah. should just say, I don't fuck with you than saying, oh, let me get something in there just so that we can, you know, and it's weird because especially being in Hollywood or being in and you get out here and you go to the comedy store or you go anywhere and you can go sometimes you go okay all right yeah. i felt that okay i, I felt that I bet, you yeah, know what yeah. i'm gonna take that l because i fucked up because i thought i thought that you know what y'all yeah. tricked me you I got know. me on this one you got yeah, me kt no, 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 no. you got me you don't gotta, worry about it you won't get me again i'll play the game i, I know where i know where i know we're just he he and he ha ha he I thought we There's were all lines. actually trying to be harmonious right. and be real. We're nah. not. Oh, we're trying to just, okay. Yeah, all right, cool. Now I know. That's Devante, you have to understand where you come from is a million times more real than here. You understand? <laughs> like, is that, well, I grew up here, but LA is essentially a desert that was created into a city by a bunch of rich white dudes who stole water from the surrounding communities <laughs> and bought up all the land. <laughs> That's actually the story of LA. You know what I mean? So it's a construct. It's fake. It's a dream, you know what I mean? And it's a and you great know what? dream. It's crazy that when I moved here, because I'm such a, I like, I'm from Virginia, and if you, I like, I'm a history fiend. I love history. Like, history is everything to me. And yeah, so, yeah. Uh, that's why when you brought a big rebellion, I'm like, oh, this motherfucker here. Okay, well, you know, <laughs> talk about Virginia for me for a second. Um, you know, the beginning of our country, especially where we're from, that's literally Hampton Roads, Virginia, Jamestown, Snooker News. Anyway, yeah, man, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the first slaves that were the brought, the first African slaves yeah. that were brought into America were brought into Hampton, right where I live, uh, right there, uh, 1638. Anyways, um, so we'll go back. Um, when I moved here, I look, I just, I looked up uh, Mulholland. I looked up, uh, what's the other oh. guy, Chandler. Yep. And then I figured out how they got the water here. Yep. And then I went to myself and I thought, I told myself, I went, you know what's interesting? This town is so fucking, in they haven't made a fucking good show or mm -hmm. good movie about the history of LA or any time period. Because even the LA Noir back in the 20s and then in, in like that time, the 1800s, the 1700s when the Mexicans and the, dude, all of the interesting, the history to me of LA is completely fucking interesting, but yeah. it's so, nobody wants to, I don't know. I, I just don't know why. I know I, why. I know why, because it's actually very, um, you'd have to get really real about race and uh, just the shit back then. Because like, cause like, first of all, there was like a, there was like a second Harlem Renaissance in, on the West Coast. Um, that was in the 50s, basically, late 40s, 50s, after the war, when everybody was coming back from the war and shit. There's a huge jazz scene, like bebop and shit like that in on Central Avenue. And um, so they was- the, Suited up, the Mexicans were suited up? No, 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 like up. after that. So it was basically before hippies in the 60s and after the fucking swing era. So there's like a period right in between, okay? Like, so it's the 50s, 50s. It's, so, um, so LA is basically the hot spot of that. <laughs> These musicians coming through all the time. There's a culture building, and it was basically um, they like self desegregated. Like white and black people just hanging out, listening to music and shit, and like people smoking weed and shit like that. And at the same time, that's when the LAPD decided to militarize its police and to crack down on um, miscegenation. Essentially, <laughs> basically, it shut all those clubs down. If I can force all the black people back south of south south of Central Avenue, if I can made like the um, cleared the white people like they just basically made it fucking hell to like hang out at all like you had all these laws passed and shit basically so they, they would stop people from hanging out so a lot of the that era uh, so you know you're talking about the era that goes from like let's say 1900 all the way up until that period like it's all tinged by all this shit so like that's why it's like sanitized everything's kind of sanitized everything's like they don't really talk about the real there's a lot of real good 
there's a lot of real good stories that are like well, you hidden know, here because of the ugliness. You know I mean? I've heard, I dude, I've heard a lot of good stories about uh, uh, this town because, um, first of all, LAPD keeps coming in number one every year for police deaths. And yeah, uh, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> dude, <laughs> so think about I've LAPD. never seen the cops <laughs> kill more people here. Yeah, and welcome to my town. It's always, they're just like, and they, and they don't even really tell you what happened. They're like, there was a police an officer just, involved shooting, and then they go to like, and here was a car chase. And, and nobody says see, a goddamn listen, word out here, dude. Listen, you're young. You, uh, the LAPD I, grew, I grew up here in the 90s. the shit out of me. That was the lesson of Rodney King. Right, we don't we don't beat up black people anymore. You we shoot them. You shoot them. End of story. That's it. End of story. There's, you don't have a trial. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. LAPD. They shoot first. Ask questions. They seriously just roll up and just open fire. And a lot of that is because um, people here are armed too. Like motherfuckers here are armed. <laughs> like, no, 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 no. Yeah. Listen. Okay, that's a whole different other conversation <laughs> about how because I come from like I come from a very uh, I come from where, let's just say Norfolk uh, International Terminal, and then you have, which is the, long, okay. the largest terminal on the East Coast coming in right here. Basically, just shipping wise, a lot of things have to play out there. And I'm just saying that I know how the streets work, and uh, I've never seen a city operate. Uh, as efficiently criminally as LA in broad daylight. And oh yeah. <laughs> LAPD is like the LAPD assists crime. Like they help the they help the professional criminals shut down the part the amateur criminals. I'm like, hey, dude, it's so beautiful because there's so much crime happening all the time and mm. uh, people don't even see it. And like, cause it, oh, dude, oh, dude, an Armenian gang shot, walked into a grocery store and shot it up, and people. It wasn't like, there wasn't a big deal out here. Mm -hmm. I, I was like, well, no, what? It happened like three blocks up the street from my house. People yeah. like, oh, yeah, yeah. Like, okay. It happens all the time. It happens. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. We're just desensitized to the shit because like it just happens. This is know? an insane place. It's, it I is really, a crazy place, yeah. So I can't even worry about when you think about the history of what happened, uh, just how the LAPD is with black people. It's like, this now, town has- It'll be a, yeah. A way it's 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 you got Armenian influences, you got Asian and you got Asian gangs, you got white gangs, you got fucking Latin gangs, you got black gangs. Dude, it's I, yeah, it'll I'm be like the fucking jokes. Warriors. I mean, it'll be like Mad Max and shit. <laughs> Basically, it's just gonna I'm be Mad Max. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the I, only I, way I've to been you live. A few times. All right, where you from? I'm like, ha, oh, man. I just tell jokes. I'm from out from Virginia, dog. I'm yeah, no, you're not I just from say here, something funny, yeah. and I'm like, oh, I'm just trying to be funny. Like, yeah. ah, leave me alone. I'm just a comedian. Yeah, you don't need to fuck with that shit. Um, hey, man, I gotta get going, but thank you so much for your time, man. Thank you so much for doing this. Uh, is there uh you want to plug like your socials or fucking anything, a show or anything? Follow like me that? on Twitter at Devontae Green. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Devontae Green. Uh, on YouTube at Devontae Green Comedy. That's about all, folks. Uh, uh, that's all, folks. <laughs> all right, man. Thanks so much. Thank you, Rogan. This was uh, this was great. I enjoyed myself. Hell yeah, me too, man. Great talk. Take care. All right, man. Bye.